Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. You see, when we come to church, church is an institution of learning. And church is an institution that builds people up. Not just teach, but it builds. And Ascendant Church here, we build people up by the word of God. And so I want you to know that today as you hear that you're ready to be built up into God's word. And we are in our series called Running the Race. Running the Race. Last week we were talking about our self-discipline in order to run the race that is set before us. Meaning the preparation that you have. That every believer you are, you are in a race but you need to prepare. And if you don't prepare well, you cannot run the race well. It's about that. So if you have not watched the message, go on our YouTube. Please go and watch the message. Message, please. I encourage you, go and watch it over and over. I have already watched it three times myself. And I'm the one preaching it. It's that good to me. You know, so I want to encourage you, go listen to it. Every preaching that we preach here, I listen two to three times myself. And, and, and then also I listen to my mentor, Apostle Joshua Selman, over and over for five hours per day I listen to his preaching why do I listen to his preaching to build me up to edify me up to strengthen me up and so I want to share with you today on this area the second part of running the race called laying off luggages that are luggages and baggages in our life that we need to lay off because if we do not lay the baggages and luggages in our life, it will be too heavy for us to run the race. So we must come to a place as a believer, as a child of God, that you are in a race, but you cannot run it with a heavy burden, with heavy luggages on you. Have you ever seen a sprinter running with a bag while they are running in a race? No. You've, you've never seen anybody put a weight on because the weight draw, draws them down or slows them down or hinders them from running the race. So you can't run a race if you have so much weight on you. So you need to learn to lay off the baggages. And before we begin that, I want to focus on telling us the crown that we have for running the race. There is a crown that each of us have. You know, like we said last week, that there is a physical crown when you run a race. You get a gold medal, you get a, 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 a ribbon or anything like that, or money. But also in our daily life, the races, the goals, the vision, the dreams that you have today. When you run this race of getting your dreams, you get a reward from your dreams. Some of you is a dream to build a house. You get a reward for building a house. You want to get a job. The, the, at the end reward is that you get a bigger money. You know what I mean? There is a reward for every race, for every vision, for every goal that you have. But as Christian, beyond the physical rewards that we have, there is eternal reward that is far more greater than the physical reward. So we run race not to obtain just the physical reward. We obtain eternal rewards. That is far more greater than the physical reward. Because the physical reward one day will pass away. One day the storms of life will hit it and you will not get the physical reward. But eternal rewards will never be passed away. It will never leave you. It will go with you even into your grave. It will all go with you even into heaven. It will also go with you when you come back from heaven. That's how important running the race and obtaining the crown. So there is five crowns that I want to share to you before we learn about laying off baggages. There is five eternal crown that we have. Number one, the crown of righteousness. The crown of righteousness. What is, if you're writing, write this down. This crown of righteousness is for every person who loves the appearing of Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. Just write that down. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. So the crown of righteousness is a crown that someone loves the appearing of Jesus. The crown is obtained of righteousness through grace, through faith. But it is the faith that you contend. In the journey that you have today. So that means when we run the, ra the race that is set before us as a Christian. 
When you become born again, the next thing that you need to know that you have a crown of righteousness. And the crown of righteousness, it means that at the end of the day, while you're on earth here, living and breathing, that you need to be a lover of Jesus. When you're not a lover of Jesus, there will never be given to you a crown of righteousness. So we need to be lovers of Jesus. We want to see Jesus one more time. But the only way you see Jesus one more time is when you're on earth here, that you're consistent in loving Jesus. You're persistent in loving Jesus. You're pursuing him like your life depends on him. But we need to come to a place that we are lovers of Jesus. So when you are a lover of Jesus, one day God will give you this crown of righteousness. When you are not a lover of Jesus, you will never receive the crown of righteousness. And Jesus is the only person that gives us this crown. Nobody will give me this crown except Jesus. I want to receive this. But you got to run. And how do you run? Loving Jesus regardless. And love Jesus regardless. When nothing is working in your life, love Jesus. When you have things, love Jesus. When, when things are going uh, up and down in your life, love Jesus. Just keep on loving Jesus. There is a reward coming. Number two reward is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. Just write it down. That reward is called incorruptible crown incorruptible crown meaning a crown that can never be taken away incorruptible crown what is an incorruptible crown incorruptible crown is a crown for people who brought their body onto subjection discipline their body and had self-control so you obtain this crown of righteousness when you have transformed your body you have transformed your soul. You know, the greatest need of a believer is the, the, the transformation of the soul and the transformation of the body. Because the moment you give your life to Jesus, your spirit is already transformed. But your body is not transformed. So is your soul not transformed. So while you're on earth here, there is a race for you to be transformed in your body. There is a race for you to be transformed in your soul. And as you are running this race of transformation in your body and your soul, you'll get a crown called incorruptible crown. An incorruptible crown. A crown that can never be taken away from you. An incorruptible crown. This is the crown that I need. So when you're on earth here, what we're doing right now, I'm teaching you, guiding you to be transformed in your soul. And also transform in your body. But this is what you do until you die and pass this life. As long as on your earth, you have to be transformed in your body and your soul. And you will get the crown of incorruptible crown. Number three is the crown of life. I love this one, the crown of life. In James chapter 1 verse 12, the crown of life. What is the crown of life? The crown of life is for people who have patiently endured trials. Patiently endured testing. Patiently endured persecution. You know, this uh, crown is given to people like martyrs in the Bible. Like Stephen in the Bible. While they were getting stoned until unto death. One day in heaven, even though they die, this crown will be given to them. The crown of life. So there is also, while we are running on this earth, God expects you to remain in your salvation. You can never allow your salvation to be taken away from you by trials. You should never allow your, your salvation to be taken away by the testing of your faith. You should never allow your salvation to be taken away by the persecution that you experience as a Christian. And as you endure these things, then God will give you the crown of life. The crown of life is not given for people who will quit halfway. It's not given for people who will quit whenever the circumstances of life come. No, the crown of life is given to you when you've proven that you are going to endure the testing of life, the testing of the circumstance that comes around your life. God will give you the crown of life. 
So it is for people who bravely confront persecution for Jesus, even unto the point of death. When you are willing to die for Jesus, you will receive the crown of life. You see, many people are not willing to die for Jesus. But if you have given your life to Jesus, the end product of your life is to die for Jesus. Because Jesus died for you and you are to die for Jesus. Paul said it like this, I am crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that live, but it is Christ that live. And the life that I live today, I live it in the faith of the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. So the only way you're going to receive the crown of life is when you endure until death. Death is no problem to you. You die for Jesus daily. The Bible says we die daily for Jesus. You will receive the crown of life. Number th four is the crown of glory. The crown of gl glory. What is the crown of glory? In 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 4. So 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 4 is called the crown of glory. What is the crown of glory? These are for faithful servants. Let me explain it. The crown of glory is for for every person who feeds the flock, the pastors, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the teachers, the ministers, the singers, and every person carrying out the Great Commission, someone who serves the body of Christ. So when you serve faithfully, one day God will give you this crown of glory. You see, this is why I will do my job regardless of numbers or non-numbers. Because one day there is a crown of glory waiting for me. One day, some of you here, God has called you to be entrepreneurs. You need to serve faithfully in that area. Maybe God has called you to become a businessman. Serve faithfully in that. Maybe God has called you to be a musician. Serve faithfully in it. When you serve faithfully in it, one day God will give you the crown of glory. That is the race that we race. To obtain the crown of glory. Number five, the fifth one, is the crown of rejoicing. The crown of rejoicing. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19. So what is the crown of rejoicing? The crown of rejoicing shall be given to people when God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. And neither sorrow, no crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So the crown of glory will be given to people. Because right now, some of us are sad. Some of us experience death, sickness, persecution, um, loneliness, crying all the time. But when the crown of glory comes, only if you endure suffering. You know, many Christians don't like to suffer. But we are designed by God to suffer. That's the ultimate goal for every Christian. Jesus suffered and so we are not exempt from suffering. So as long as you're here, you're going to suffer. You're going to get rejected. You're going to get insulted. You're going to get betrayed. People are going to break your heart. You may have divorce. You may go through problems. You may go through circumstances. But as you are going through this thing, just suffer for Jesus. One day God will wipe away all your tears and all your sorrows so you can receive the crown of rejoicing. The crown of rejoicing. This I am waiting for. No more sickness. No more going to the doctors. No more taking uh, panadols and headache pills and all of these things. No more. And all the girls will be happy. No more pain. No more pain. No more pain. But are you willing to suffer? Some of us are, 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 are right now waiting. Like many ladies are waiting to, to go to heaven and say, Eve, where are you? Eve, where are you? But all I want to tell you right now, don't worry about Eve, suffer now. Because as you suffer now, one day you receive the rejoicing. No more tears. No more tears. No more tears. No more tears. There will be no more tears. These are the race that we are in. You are in a race where you have to suffer. You are in a race where you have to be faithful in whatever gift and talent that God has given you. You are in a race. You are in a race to be transformed in your body and your soul. You are in a race. You are in a race also to be a lover of Jesus. You are in this race. But you can't run this race if you have luggages and baggages. 
So, what must we do in order to run the race? We must lay off these baggages. Let's understand from Hebrew chapter 12. Let's read the scripture together. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Now, this is my message for today. Is laying off baggages. Hebrew said it. It says, therefore, since we are, are surrounded with a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every sin that easily, or every sin and every weight that easily takes us away. Can we put it up, please? So that means there is a race. Can we read it together? Ready? One, two, three, go. Therefore, we also... Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Just hold there. That means we are surrounded with a great cloud of witnesses. Who are these witnesses? Those who have already obtained. Those who have already run before us. There are people who ran the race that you're trying to run right now. There is nothing that you're trying to run right now. The goals in your life. The calling in your life. There is nothing that nobody has ever done it before. There are people who have already done it before. According to the scripture, they are called the heroes of faith. They are called the heroes of faith in Hebrew chapter 11. So there are a great cloud of witnesses. So if you're here, God has called you to become Deborah. You need to understand, look in the life of Deborah. What did Deborah go through? If you're here, God has called you to be an Esther. Look at the life of Esther because Esther is your example of running the race. Deborah is your example of running the race. Maybe you're here, you're Samson. God has called you to be a deliverer of your people. There is a race set for you. You need to look at Samson. How did Samson overcome it? Maybe some of us are like Solomon. God has called you to be a person of wisdom so that you can run the race that God has given to you. Look at Solomon. How did he run the race? So that means there are people that are witnesses. They are the they are, they, 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 they epic picture of what we need to obtain. They are our example to run the race. So you're not running aimlessly. You have a model. You have an example. You have people. Search every scripture and you'll find out your character there. Find every scripture. I know my, my character in the word of God. I know what God called me. The calling that I have. I know. If I want to know the calling I have, I look at prophet Samuel and I look at prophet uh, Moses. Moses and Samuel are the people that resonate with the call of God in my life. The destiny that God has called me. So I want to look at what did Moses go through so I can go through it too. What did Samuel go through that I can go through it too. If maybe you are you're, you're, uh, someone who's called into the politics. Look at Daniel. Prophet Daniel is your example. That Prophet Daniel was called to become a governor and yet he was a prophet. Some of you see a God, I've called you to be a musician. Look at some of the musicians in the Bible. Mary is one of the best musicians in the Bible. Mary, when she conceived, the Bible says she sang a song. And even Elizabeth, when she sang a song, those songs are re resonate in the realms of the Spirit. But look at the challenge that Mary went through and Elizabeth. There are people, your example in life, that you can follow. There are cloud of glory. Someone who ran the race before you. You can run to. You can look and study their life. So you can run the same. Can we finish that sentence from let us. Let's go. Let us lay aside every weight. And the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance. The race that is said what? Before us. So, we are to lay aside. If you do not lay aside, you cannot run. You have to learn to lay aside. Patrick, come. Yeah, come. Abraham, come. Give you a good example. All right? Patrick, you're going to be the one trying to run. And then you hold him from running. All right? <laughs> He has the muscles, so we need to see how strong Abraham is and Patrick is today. All right? So I want you to run, but I want you to stop him from running. Let's go. Run. Run. Come back. All right. Now, can I get someone lighter? 
Abraham, you're too heavy for Patrick. Go down. Now, just imagine, okay? Imagine he has, he's carrying Abraham on his back and he's trying to run. Do you think he will run? Effectively? This is most of us. We're trying to run, but there are things attached to us. There are weights attached to us. Try to run. There are things attached to us. <laughs> right? Thank you, Patrick. You see, you cannot run when there are heavy loads behind you. The only time you need heavy weights is when you're doing training. But once you're in a race, don't worry about heavy weights anymore. Because training is a place to build you to get stronger. So you can put more weights in training. But once you're in a race, you cannot do that anymore. And so every Christian, you are in a race. But we have baggages and luggages in our life that we need to let go of. And the scripture says, this weight and sin, we have to lay aside. Two things you have to lay aside, weight and sin. And I want to describe to you today what is weight and what is sin. Because if we do not do these things, our journey will be hindered. The Christian life is likened to a race and in that race we are to lay aside anything that hinders our progress. And what hinders our progress according to this scripture is a weight and sin. So these sins and weight, we call it luggages and baggages in our terminology for today. They are luggages that makes it difficult or impossible to run a race. These luggages hinder our progress as we have seen in the scripture right now. And I want to tell you this. Weight and sin was never designed by God to be part of our journey. Weight and sin are not designed to be part of our journey in the race that we have. You see, God may want you to achieve a goal in one year or in two years. But if you're not careful, the weight in your life will delay to be five years. Or even six years. The sin in your life can make it even longer. So, you, so that means weight and sin are delayers in our life. They delay us from running or achieving the goal quicker. It makes it harder. That's why Patrick could not go there faster. It took him a little bit of time before he got there. He may get there, but by the time he gets there, he's already worn out. Because of the weight and the sin. So what is weight in your life? And what sin is in your life today? That's stopping you from running the race that God has for you. What is weight? So let's define the weight. If you're writing, please write this down. Weight in the Christian life is not a sin. Weight in the Christian life is not a sin, rather an experience within a person. So it is an experience that you experience within you. Don't finish the sentence. Or imposed by an external factor in your life. So weight is imposed on you by an external factor. Such as evil spirit, such as family history, such as personal uh, 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 preferences, such as society, or our surrounding, our, our environment impose weight upon us. But, here's the but about the weight. It becomes a limitation. Weight is not a sin, but it becomes a limitation. Weight is not a sin, but it becomes a barrier. You see, from this example, the scripture here says there is something called every weight and the sin. So it cannot mean the same thing. 
It has to be two different things. So from my understanding and the revelation God gave to me, that weight is not a sin. But weight is rather an experience that you experience in your life. For example, some of us may come from a broken home. And through that broken helm, there are experiences that you experience there. That you've seen your mother, your father do certain things. And those things become a barrier to your running the race that is set for you. Because you have seen your mom fail in life, your dad fail in life. All these things can become a weight in you, to you, for you. So, this weight to me is greater than sin. To me is the hardest thing than sin. Why, why do I say this? If you understand weight, since it's not a sin, it can deceive you. Mean weight are good things. They are good things in a way. They are reasonable things in a way. But because they are not sin, so we don't consider it bad. You see that? When something you don't consider it bad as sin, you can sometimes think that is now part of your life to be like this. So when you come from a broken home, you begin to see that broken home. You think it's a norm. Now you want to run a race, but because of the background of your family, it will cause you to think it's a norm. It's okay to be like this. It's okay to do things like this. So it can deceive you to think that, uh, that it's okay. So because it's okay, I cannot do. Because it's okay, it becomes a limitation to your destiny. For example, you, in, in your family, there, there are people getting divorced every, week, every year, right? So it becomes a norm. So you will ever think that you will get divorced as well. So you will think I should not even get married at all. Because there are weight that seem to become a norm in you, within you. They are imposed on you by factors. External factors. External factors like evil spirit. Evil spirit can come sit on people's life to put you down. And then because you think that's a norm, then you want to live and run the way it is. So number one, what is the greatest or some points I have about weight so I can make it home with you? The biggest weight that we have is called fear. Fear is not a sin, but fear is a weight. Do you know why? Have you ever seen in the Bible that says fear is a sin? No. But many of us are afraid. <laughs> so because we're afraid, we are afraid of failure. Failure become a weight. You cannot achieve the goal. That is why many of us are not succeeding because we look at the failures in our life, look at the failures in our family, look at the families around us, and then we begin to see that, okay, it's okay to fear. You need to learn to let go of your fears of failure. Because your fears of failure is a weight. The fears of meeting expectation. It's a weight. When you carry the expectation of other people can become a weight to you. Because you think you will never meet that weight. So you are afraid of meeting an expectation. And also the fear of, 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 of family curse. There are curses in our families that we are afraid of. And then they become our limitation on future. Okay, God wants me to be transformed, but I don't know the end product. I don't know the end product. God wants me to be a lover of him. God wants me to be faithful in serving him. God wants me to do this and do that and do that. But you are not knowing the unknown, the, the future that is ahead. It can become a weight in your life. So you can't run. It's like this. The best thing is that some of you like drinking soft drink. To you, soft drink is the best. But to me, soft drink is a sin. Okay, I'm not making it. It's not a sin example, okay? Soft drink, that's preference. Now, it's a weight for me. So I call it a sin. It's a weight for me. For me, if I drink soft drink, I don't want to have a God. That stops me from running. I want to live long, so I don't drink soft drink. 
So my, my, my weight is soft drink. But to someone else, they can drink soft drink. They will run the race. It's not a weight. Do, do you see what I'm trying to say here? That there are personal weights in our life. But it's not a sin. So what I'm trying to say is that you need to, to know that weight can become your biggest hindrance. Your biggest hindrance. Fear of failure. Fear of meeting expectation. Fear of family curses. Fear of the unknown. Number two is purse hurts. The hurts that you've experienced. People hurting you. This can become a barrier to you running any race. You remember the pain they have given to you. So you think, no, I cannot, you don't use it as a motivation to push you. You use it as a, as a tool to push you down instead. Sometimes we need to watch our past experiences. The pain that we go through, they can become a weight in our life. Maybe, you're, maybe a church broke you. Maybe a church hurt you. And now because of the church that hurt you, now you don't want to even serve God. Now you don't want to even follow the call of God. So it can become a weight in your life. It's not a sin, but it becomes a weight. So we need to learn to let go of the hurts of churches, people in our life in order to run the race. These are hindrances. These are hindrances. Number three, in the weight, lack of confidence. You see, when you're not confident, you can't run. You think everybody's better than you. When you have low self-esteem, you can't run because you look at the brother, you look at Patrick with the muscle, you go, nah, I can't run that race. He's going to win. He has bigger guns than me and look at me. You know, you, you begin to compare yourself. There is no confidence in yourself. They are weight. Self-esteem is low. That is weight. So we need to become confident in order to run the race. These are hindrances. If you lack confidence in your life, it's a weight. If you lack self-esteem in your life, it's a weight. It's a weight that stops you from running. The race that God has for you. Number four is confirming to the expectation of society and others. You see, society has an a, a, a expectation. And people have an expectation. And when you conform to the expectation of others, they can become a limitation to you going forward. To running the race. We have to not be confirmed to the expectation of society. Society has a standard of running a race. Has a standard of doing things. No. The Bible says we are in the world, but we are not of this world. So our expectation is different. We don't conform to it. We conform to the word. To the word of Jesus. Number five. My favorite. Lack of knowledge. Or being ignorant. Many of us want to run the race. But we're not willing to know the knowledge. Be informed in what race we are in. If you are not educating yourself. If you don't have knowledge in the area that you, God has called you to do, it becomes a limitation, a barrier to you getting there. Lack of knowledge or ignorance, choosing not to study, choosing not to, to, to uh, get information concerning the things that God has for you. This is a weight in your life. So now let's look at sin. What is sin? What is sin? What is sin? You see, I like the part there in that scripture. It says, and the sin which so easily ensnares us. So meaning there are sins in our life that easily deceives us and traps us. It's easy. It traps you so very quickly. You sometimes don't think it's a sin, but it becomes a sin. Sometimes you think it's okay, but then it becomes a sin. So it has a way to trap you. There's a sin that traps you all the time. First, what is sin? What is sin in the Christian life? Sin in the Christian life is breaking God's command or God's word or God's law. So sin is breaking God's command. 
So, for example, God has given us all these five crowns that we're supposed to get in order to run the race. But you're breaking the, 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 the word of God. It can become a hindrance to you. When you're breaking the word of God. Breaking the word of God. The Bible described it in 1 John chapter 3 verse 4. In 1 John chapter 3 verse 4. The Bible says it like this. Whoever commits sin also commits um, lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. That means if someone refuses to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to recognize God's word as the high authority in their life, it becomes a sin. When you don't put the word of God as the first priority in your life, it becomes a sin. So sin is disobeying the word of God. Sin is transgressing the word of God. Sin is not following the commands of God. Sin is, follow, is not following the principles of God. This can become a weight. So for example, God wants you to be faithful in, in your call of God. But you are indulging in the flesh. You are indulging in the flesh. Indulging in the flesh is you, you commit a, a fornication. You dwell in fornication. You commit uh, adultery. You dwell in adultery. You think they, they are hindrance to your life. Or you are dwelling in addictions. There are some addictions in your life. And these are things that keeps you bound. Does not keep you going forward. You disobey the word of God. So the, 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 the desires of our flesh are sin. This hinders us from running the race. The desires of our flesh. For example, um, you are called to be a man of God, a child of God in that area, but you're running around messing around with girls or messing around with boys. You're going running around sleeping with other people, but yet God wants you to be a preacher. But you're doing these things behind the doors. This is disobeying the word of God. This can hinder you from receiving the call of God. I know people who are called into ministry today. They are not living in that ministry because they are, they are now doing other things. God calls them to be a pastor, a preacher of the gospel. But they are playing with other girls, having three or four girls here and there. And prophesying to other people, you'll be my wife. Prophesying that you'll be my, my this, my side chick and all of these things. You disobey the word of God. You prophesy, you, you know, you prophesy in accurate to benefit yourself. There are people like this. So you, got, you, you can't run the race while you're breaking the commands of God. It hinders you from running the race. For example, God, you, 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 as a woman, God has, has so much plans for you, things for you. But you're here messing up with a little boyfriend on the side. You get pregnant before you even know it. That hinders you from running the race. Instead of, you know, instead of, instead of keeping yourself holy, you're presenting yourself unholy to someone else. As a young person, as a young girl or a young man here, you got to realize these things are important. I got to keep myself holy in order, to, in order to, to run the race that God has for me. It's okay when you are not a born again, the things you have done. That's okay. God has forgiven you. But now that you are born again, you should not be dwelling in sin anymore. No. If there are boys or, or girls that want to do things with you, just for the sake of saying that I love you, say, no, no, sorry. Even though you love me, you, you're going against the word of God in my life. We need to learn these things. Keep yourself. Tell the boy, sorry. This thing is locked until heaven comes. Yeah. It's love. Yeah, you got to keep saying that. And you, you can't say, you can't just touch me like this. I'm a queen. You don't just touch queen like that. You, you, you touch queen because you become a king yourself. So if you don't become a king, you cannot touch some areas in my body. Keep yourself. Know yourself. Know yourself. Don't just get into things. It can hinder you. I know some girls, God called them to be, but they went and date unbelievers. And now they date unbelievers and they became born again. Now they can't preach. Because they went away from the will of God. Now they went to date a man who does not want to go to church. You see what I'm saying? If you disobey the word, the word of God, it becomes a hindrance to the race that is ahead of you. You run away from sin. Run away from sin. 
Run away from stealing. Stealing is, can also hinder you. God is watching every detail of our life. Lying, the biggest thing is lying. Christians, we are lying behind doors. Lying can be a hindrance. We've got to learn to not lie. We lie a lot. We envy a lot. Envy is a sin. Even God says, I am jealous. God also envies. But He envies that do because he, he knows that He's the only one who can provide for you. So why do you envy other people? You see, envy, jealousy, all of these things, comparing ourselves, these are things that are, they, they are sin. They can hinder our destiny. Hatred. God wants you to live and become somebody, but you hate people. Hatred. That's a God's, against the word of God. That's a sin. That hinders you from running the race. You can't, you can't say you, you, you want to be for God and yet you hate people. No, it does not work like that. Number three in that area of sin that hinders us is the loss of the, uh, uh, the, the pride of life. The pride of life is trusting in yourself. Trusting in yourself is sin. You know, we have motivational speakers nowadays. Motivational speakers lead people to think that they should trust on themselves. Look, I love motivational people, but you cannot say that the only thing I can achieve in life is by motivating my life, by pushing myself. No, the Bible says we should deny ourselves, not rely on ourselves. You see, motivational speakers focus on you, on self, self. No, no, no. As a Christian, you don't focus on you. He says, I am dead with Christ. You, you believe in who God is in your life, not you believe in yourself. You believe in what God says about you. You believe in what He's saying about you. That's our confidence. So we trust in ourselves. When you trust in yourself, you become a barrier to your own destiny. Trust God to take you to your destiny. And also, disobeying parents parents children youth disobeying parents will stop you from getting to your destiny god's blessing in order to receive the things that he has for you you cannot disobey your parents the only time you are allowed to disobey your parents is when it goes against the word of god but if not you cannot and will not and should not disobey your parents also, disobeying authorities, driving reckless on the road. That's disobeying the government. The Bible says we are supposed to sub subject ourselves to authorities. People, oh, I'm a Christian, but it's okay, I can speed, fine, you know, the camera will not find me. No. You're disobeying the law. Who, who gave the, the authority to the government? God. You drive without no license, come on. We used to do that, but we, we had to repent. I, one, one time I did it, I said, God, forgive me from that day. But I wasn't born again. But I still repented. So you see these little things, we think it's nothing. You don't have a license, sit down. Relax. Borrow, get people to help you. But these things will, I'm telling you, these things will hinder your destiny. Little sins, people think it's nothing. But in the eyes of God, there are big things. There's nothing called little sin or big sin, sin to God. Sin is a sin, just like that. White sin, lying, white lying, or black lying, all of them are sin. <laughs> They're all the same. There's all of them. All of them are the same. And then our leaders. Our leaders. You see, disobeying our leaders is a sin. Even how bad your leader is, God invested the authority on the leader. You cannot disobey your leaders. Your pastors, your mentors, these people, you cannot disobey them. Once you disobey them, it becomes, in the realm of the spirit, God puts an alarm. This one is disobeying the authority. Therefore, the hindrance, God hinders them. They become a hindrance. They give room for Satan to touch the person. If you disobey your pastors and leaders, I don't want to be, I'm not that kind of pastor. I love people, so I'm not going to do curse. It's God who does that. 
But the Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. That means we need to subject ourselves to our leaders. And if you disobey your leader, your life will never be the same. You have to learn these things. I know your leaders may not be perfect, but you're supposed to subject to them. Listen to them. God deals with them if they don't do right. But for you, you're supposed to obey your leaders. If you don't obey your leaders, forget about your destiny. The race that you have for you, you'll be hindered. Satan is giving room. God will say, Satan, go for it. He is, my daughter is in disobedience. Beat him all you like. Hit him all you like. God will not stop that. Because you have violated the law of God. And so God cannot put his hand on you. These are things that we need to know. Our leaders are important in our life. The race that is set before us. In conclusion, the weight and sins that are in our life that we do or experience causes wrong belief. All these things deal with our wrong our belief system. Your actions of lying and do, it deals with our belief system. And because if it deals with our belief system, it cannot push us forward to our destiny. It becomes a hindrance. And it leads to hindrance in our race. So we must pay close attention to what we are believing. The things you're doing is causing a belief system in you. Lying is causing a belief system in you. Sin is causing a belief system in you. Weight is causing a belief system in you. Pay attention to them because they produce wrong beliefs. Wrong beliefs weigh you down, weigh your heart down, weigh your feet down. It distracts your feet from the direction that you're supposed to go into. Wrong beliefs takes away your energy. Therefore, we need to take care and watch out for the race that is set for us by paying attention to the weight and sin in our life. You must identify what weight in your life and sins in your life and resolve it today. Today, I want you to resolve them today. Solve it out today. If there is any weight in your life today, I want you to right now Come to a place of repenting, changing your way. Repentance is not just confession. Repentance is saying, God, I'll turn away from this. I'll do a U-turn. That is called repentance. Repentance is saying, I know I was doing wrong. Now I have turned around. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm going the right direction. Some of us need to do that today. Let's all stand up today.